So, like many penetration testers, you may feel pretty confident with some programming languages, operating system, command lines, and all of that good stuff, but know very little when it comes to the world of hardware hacking, and this just seems way too overwhelming with no idea where the best place to start is. This is exactly how I felt about one month ago before I purchased the 30 Days Lost in Space kit by Inventor.io. And while this isn't targeted towards security or hardware hacking, I purchased it with the idea that it could be a good introduction to give me more sort of foundational knowledge as to how hardware is programmed. As my motto always goes, the best way to learn to abuse something is how to learn how to use it first. So in today's review, I'll be going over the 30 day lost in space kit by inventor.io and explore if I think it's a great introduction kit to electronics, hardware programming, and ultimately if you can use this knowledge as a security practitioner. So let's rewind. 30 Days Lost in Space is an introductory electronics kit aimed from anywhere from 12 years up and it's focused on the Arduino platform, specifically the Arduino Uno, which is this thing here. Or the actual chip is the 18 Mega 328P. It's a story gamified approach to teaching. I found it pretty fun and a little bit cute. The story behind it is you've crashed your spaceship on a foreign planet and you need to fix it all up using the equipment in this kit. As such, there are 30 lessons teaching you all of the basics that cover the Arduino IDE and the C++ programming language, the Arduino Uno board which is, and the breadboard, which I just showed you, and specific components like LEDs, switch, switches, potentiometers, displays, and all of that good stuff. The lesson is broken down into a general overview and it's acted in line with the story and then followed by a programming tutorial followed by the wiring tutorial so you have one of these every day each day the wiring diagrams and coding is provided to you so you don't have to work it out yourself and piece it together based on the what they teach you you just follow along you follow along with the code and you follow along with the wiring but as such this really creates that sort of uh, approach where you just feel like you're just copying and pasting other people's work and not really learning that hands-on. But that is until you get to the creative days. Now they do these creative days once every five to ten days and this takes everything that you've learned so far and puts it in a challenge where you just create whatever you, whatever the heck you like based on what you've learnt so far. So I found this really good. I came up with a lot of unique ideas to try and do stuff. Much was more above the scope of what I had learnt to that point, but it was good to stretch yourself and kind of get buried deep in code and try new things. So this really helps compensate by giving you that encouraging hands-on approach. The entire course is actually free on their website. However, you do need that kit before you can start following along. Throughout the journey, I largely enjoyed the process and I do enjoy doing one lesson every day as I really felt that this wasn't overwhelming on a busy schedule. Each lesson generally goes for around half an hour, but when you watch it on 1.5 speed, a little bit quicker, especially if you're familiar with programming or C++. I did learn the basics of programming chips and how various components that I listed before interact from a hardware and software layer. It also got me thinking of how things I can, of what things I can build for myself around the home, like an automatic plant irrigation system based on uh, moisture, moisture sensors and automatic pumps and everything to bring it all together on an Arduino. So this really got me thinking. So now for the cost to value ratio. The kit cost about $97 on their website, but you can easily find coupons to take about 20 to 30% off with some creative guessing at the checkout. For me in Australia though, the real killer was the postage and exchange rate. So this ended up costing me 170 Aussie dollars just for this little kit. In terms of what I learned from the course, I did get a fundamental knowledge on how hardware and software integrates with Arduinos or similar programmable chips. I learned about the basics of electronics and breadboards and all of that stuff. I learned a lot more about different digital and analog signals and how they can be controlled and manipulated. I saw how basic components like displays, buttons, screens, speakers all integrate into a circuit. 
It inspired me to take on other DIY projects, and it gave me a very basic understanding on some very security fundamentals when it came to these sorts of devices. So as for the pros here, the lessons were really great. I found them fun, the narrative was good, the programming and wiring tutorials were pretty fun as well. It really got me inspired and gave me that basic introduction that I was looking for. It was just a lot of fun and it was a great mix of different components. But for the cons, there were a few. I can buy every component in this kit for about, for about 30 Aussie dollars. So it is extremely expensive for what you get. But that being said, I understand there's a huge amount of cost in producing the training material. So in a way, I suppose that's what you're paying for. The course has been refreshed, but the audio quality for the programming tutorials is still woefully bad. I think these are still the original audio from that. Um, you can still hear things pretty clearly, but just really isn't up to that professional quality that you'd expect. And lastly, while I did find it very inspiring and it was good to be hands-on, I still thought at times I ju was just too much copying pasting code and copying wide wiring diagrams. I would have preferred just a little bit more hands-on. So as for the bottom line, I really did enjoy this course and kit, and while it was a bit of a luxury in terms of the price, the training content did provide me that great introduction to hardware that I was looking for. I learned a lot about the ecosystem of different chips, and I think it forms that foundational knowledge I need to start looking into more hardware hacking. As I said before, the best way to use something, the best way to abuse something is learn how to use it first. So this certainly helps with that. So have you dived into the world of hardware hacking yet? If so, I'd love to hear about your journey and where you kickstarted it. Stay tuned for more hardware hacking. I will be starting to look at some RFID stuff soon, which has kind of had me a bit occupied for the past couple of weeks. So I'd love to share that once I feel confident enough. Thanks for watching and like, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next video.